Amen. I would suggest that, that each of you consider at least once or twice a month to come to intercessory prayer. Um, Wednesday nights from 6.30 to 6.55. Just, just 25 minutes. It won't hurt to pray for 25 minutes. Many of us ain't prayed in 25 days. <laughs> so 25 minutes won't hurt nobody if you ain't prayed in 25 days. Come on now. Many of us have been doing drive-by prayers anyway. So that's, it's just something about the uh, collectiveness, knowing that there's other believers in the prayer and other believers are in the house to, to release. When you hear somebody pray, they praying what maybe you're going through or what you want to say, but you didn't think to say it. But yet they're praying, and so you just go into agreement with that prayer. So I would suggest that you at least consider uh, putting on your calendar. Uh, uh, no, no, don't put it on the calendar. Put it in your heart. Just say, you know what? Let me take some time out to get and pray to God at 6.30 every Wednesday night. All right? Let's look at something. We, we, we've been talking about God's covenant and the promises of God for the last three weeks. Uh, I just can't get out of this promises that God has made to us. Uh, I just want to know even the more because the world is constantly trying to bring blockage into my mind and, and make me doubt what God is saying. Sometimes you look at circumstances in your life, circumstances in your health, circumstances in your job, circumstances in your church, and, and, and sometimes it will bring doubt that, that God is really alive. And so we know that God is alive. But sometimes we don't, we act like he, he just passing us by. Mm -hmm. And so I want us to be uh, reminded even the more the promises of God. Amen. You, know, you know how mama would tell you, if you be good in church or be good in school, I'll I, I give you some candy when you get home. <laughs> I made it my business to be as nice as I possibly can because there was a promise made. I'm going to get some candy when I get home. And sometimes mama would tell me, she said, now, if you do good in school, I'll give you a slice of cake when you get home. Man, you know that cake was on my brain all day. Come on now. You know, I'm going to, listen, whatever that teacher wants. Matter of fact, I'm going to empty her garbage because I'm getting some cake. And so when you know there's a promise, you act up and act upon what someone has said and promised you. So now what we want to do is look back and find out who was the first person God made a covenant because all I'm doing is just benefiting from what somebody else agreed upon. Let me say that again. I am benefiting. We are benefiting what somebody else agreed upon. So now, because I'm in agreement with God, God was in agreement with somebody else. Now, check this out. God did not make a covenant like he made with Abraham. He didn't make it with uh, 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 Adam and Eve. Now, the only covenant he made with them was don't eat off that tree. But now with Adam, he made a covenant of everlasting covenant that I will not only bless you, but I'm going to bless your descendants. I'm going to bless the people after you. And that's us, guys. God, is, God promised Abraham four days ago. I'm going to let that settle. I'm going to let that settle for a minute because some of y'all got to think about this. God spoke to Adam, I mean Abraham, four days ago and said, you know what? If you be obedient and do what I tell you to do, I'm a blessed area. Now, isn't that amazing? I thought about uh, me leaving Jacksonville, Florida, and coming to Raleigh uh, 19 years ago. And then I think about the people who have died and went on to be with Jesus. If I had not came and been obedient, some of those people probably would have never known about Jesus. So you mean to tell me my kicking and screaming don't want to leave Florida, don't want to leave the comfort of my home, don't want to leave my good church, don't want to leave my family to come to a, a state and, and to minister the word of God when nobody showed up, but yet I kept on ministering, kept on preaching, kept on living, and somebody got saved. If I hadn't been obedient, somebody would have went to hell. So now, watch this. God made a covenant agreement four days ago with Abraham. Now, I know some of y'all trying to say, well, now, wait a minute, Pastor, how in the world that was four days ago? Well, technically, in your earthly thinking, it was four, uh, uh, 400 years ago, 4,000 years ago. 4,000 years ago, God spoke to Adam. I mean, Abraham. I don't know what's wrong with Adam. He keeps jumping in my mouth. God spoke to Abraham 4,000 years ago. And the Bible said a 1,000 years is like one day to the Lord. 
So technically, God just spoke to Abraham four days ago. Come on, somebody. So this is a fresh covenant we're getting right here. Ain't that powerful? So now, I want you to see something. I got to hurry up because I got a lot of scriptures I need to cover. I want to know, why did God make a promise to Abraham? Why Abraham? Because when we look at Abraham, he came from a descendant family that was not a believers. They were not people that believed God. Matter of fact, they were wayward people that served other gods. Joshua 24 said that Abraham's father, Abraham's uncle, and Abraham himself, they served other gods. And God called Abraham out of an ungodly situation. Maybe that's, my, maybe that's why you feel lonely. Maybe that's the reason why you feel like you're all by yourself. God is trying to take you away from people, certain people, who's interfering with the covenant. All right. You're trying to hold on to somebody. You're trying to grab somebody. You are, you're trying to wonder why your mom and dad is not in your life like you want to. You're probably wondering why your children ain't in your life like you want to. You're wondering why your, children, your boss and your co-workers, your family, your friends, your neighbors not in your life like you want to. It could be because they might be interfering with your covenant. And since God loved you so much, he ain't fixing to let anything stop you from flowing with the anointing. Oh, I like that right there. So God, whatever you need to do, whoever you need to remove, remove. Come on, somebody. Remove whoever you need to remove. Get me out the way of some people that's hindering me because I don't want God to cut me off. Okay, let's get into the scripture. Let's look at something. I want you to turn in Genesis, the 12th chapter, verse 1 through 3. Let's look at three things. I ask myself three questions. I want to know. Why was God making a covenant with Abraham? I will ask myself three questions, and we're going to look at question number one. What was the promises that God made to Abraham? Number one, what was the promise God made to Abraham? Now, if God going to make me a promise, I need to know what he said to my forefathers. If I'm going to trust my God, if I'm going to believe in my God, I need somebody or something that I can look back at and see how God was with them. And if God was with them, he the same God yesterday. Come on, somebody. The same God yesterday and today and forevermore. So sometimes we get into a rut, we get into a cold spell, we get into a dry place where we feel like God ain't nowhere near. So what we're going to do tonight is look at who God was with in the past, four days ago. <laughs> if God was with him four days ago, I know he can be with me four days later. Come on, somebody. So let's look at something. So number one, what was the promises God made to Abraham? What was the covenant that God made with Abraham? And the word covenant means a binding contract, an agreement between God and his people. So God is making a, a covenant contract with Abraham. Now, you got to understand something now. This is going to be an overflow. Whatever he promised Abraham is going to flow over. So Abraham can't even handle all this him blessing he's going to get. This covenant agreement that God is making with Abraham, Abraham can't even hold on to all of it. So in other words, God said, you can't handle everything I got for you. So I got to give an overflow to your children. Boys, I like that right there. I can't handle everything God got for me. So that means he's going to give some overflow to some, I wish I had somebody. Somebody said, I got an overflow. I, I feel an overflow. God going to give me an overflow. So now let's look at number one. Number one, what was the promise that God made to Abraham? Genesis 12, verse 1 through 3. Watch what it says, Genesis 12, chapter, verse 1, what it says. The Lord has said to Abram. Now check this out. Remember now, Abraham is in a country that don't believe in God. Abraham has been raised up to believe in another God. And God, with his awesome self, knows how to get through all that rubbish all that garbage, just to get who he wants. Watch what he says in verse 1. The Lord has said to Abram, uh -huh. go from your country, yeah. your people, and your father's household uh -huh. to the land I will show you. Now check this out. Verse 1, read it again. The Lord has said to Abram. There's three things you're going to see that God's telling him to leave. Three things God's going to tell him to leave, but then you're going to see God give him three things to replace it. Read, reader. Go from your country. First of all, I need you to leave your land. Your people. No, wait, wait, wait. I need you to leave 
where you're comfortable at. The very land that you love, I need you to leave it. Yeah. Number two. Your people. Number two, I need you to leave the people that you know, the people that you're comfortable with. I need you to leave the land, number one, leave the people, and watch this. And your father's household. And leave your daddy. <laughs> so look what God is saying. I want you to leave three things that you know you're comfortable with. You're comfortable with the land. You know every corner. I need you to leave the people. You know every per person that's in the land. And I need you to leave your daddy. Mm -hmm. Now, the last one, that was interesting. Because you're asking me to leave who take care of me. You're asking me to leave somebody who comfort me and protect me. Now, watch this. God tells him, leave the land, leave the people, and leave your daddy. Now, watch what God get ready to do next. Read. I will make you into a great nation. No, no. Go back up to verse 1. Read it again. The Lord had said to Abram. What? Go from your country. One. Your people. Two. And your father's household. Three. Now, watch. What, wait a minute now. He's going to give him the same thing that he's he going to leave. The very thing that he's going to walk away from. God going to replace it. Now, he said, get away from your country. Now, watch what God says next. To the land I will show you. I'm going to bless you with some more land. After you leave a land, I'm going to give you land. But wait a minute now. He's leaving what he can see. He's leaving what he can touch. He's leaving what he's familiar with. And everything God is getting ready to tell him to go to is something that he can't not see. It's all about faith. So you mean to tell me God want me to walk by faith? See, we are accustomed to touching our promises. But God wants you to believe your promises. So he tells him to leave a land, and then he tells him, I'm going to give you a land. Read the next one. I will make you into a great nation. Oh, oh, so leave your people and I'm going to give you some people. What's the third one? And I will bless you. Wait a minute now. Your daddy blessed you all these years, but now I'm going to bless you. Once again, who's your daddy? <laughs> so look what God does. God gives him three things and asks him, I want you to walk away from it. I ain't going to take it from you. Who is it that you need to walk away from? I'm going to let you see law on that one. What is it? That's blocking you, but you're so in love with the land, so in love with that bracelet, so in love with that car, so in love with that job, so in love with your health that you won't walk away from it. Pastor, I can't walk away from the very thing that's helping me, but God is saying to Abraham, I want you to leave the land, leave the people, and leave your father. And not, wait a minute now, and not only leave them, but I'm going to give you something else. In other words, I'm going to promise you something. So look what God tells Abraham. I'm promising you something. I'm promising you something that you can't even see yet. I'm just giving you my word what I'm going to do. My God. Do you not know, see what you, what's happening right here? Look around in this room. We are the examples of the covenant God made four days ago with Abraham. God said, I'm going to give you a nation. I'm going to give you a people. Don't you see the people? We are the covenant agreement that God made with Abraham. We are the examples of what God did. Ooh. So if God can agree and make a covenant agreement with Abraham four, four days ago, and it's still coming to pass four days later, what promise he going to make to you? If he can make a promise four days ago, what's getting ready to happen four seconds from now? I wish I had somebody. Yes. You better not blink a blessing coming. My God. You better not blink a blessing coming. You better not. Tell neighbor, don't blink. So, number one, the promises God made to Abraham, the covenant he made. Why did he make the promise to Abraham? Because I want to give you, I want to give you a land that you left. I want to give you some people that you left. And I want to give you a father that you left. I'm going to replace everything that you walked away from. In order to be a Christian, you got to walk away from something. You cannot bring what you used to do onto this journey. When you walk with God, it's going to be a little scary. It's going to be challenging. 
But you got to believe if he told Abraham four days ago what he'll do for him. Now, check out verse 2. Watch this verse 2. Read. I will make you into a great nation. Look what he says. I'm going to make you. It ain't happened yet. But, but, but in order for it to happen, you got to do something. It ain't going to. See, what we want to do is see the bridge before we start crossing. And God say, there's a bridge. Start walking. And, and it's hard for us as believers to believe God based on what we can't see. If God says you rich, tell yourself, I'm rich. But now, don't tell yourself you got money and you ain't got the spirit. Because I know a whole lot of dumb people got money. One number 45. Read, 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 read. read. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. Watch this. I'm going to make you. I'm going to make you. I'm going to make you. I'm going to develop you. You ain't through growing. Stop thinking you have arrived. You have always got to be in a teachable spirit. Don't never think because you've been saved a long time that you know everything. There's a lot of things in God God ain't revealed to you yet. Do you know John 3.16? Everybody know that? But everybody still ain't got everything God wants them to know about John 3.16? God so loved the world. See, you know the quote it, but do you really know what God wants you to know about it? There's too much of God for you to contain him. And you got to be careful when you think God only talking to you. I know how to humble myself. I got pastors that I set up through, through the spirit of God. I got ministers that I set up through the spirit of God. I got deacons I set up through the spirit of God. I got women of God I set up through the spirit of God. And I know how to humble myself and let them preach to me. Be careful when you think you know the Bible. Abraham, get out of town. Get out of town. Leave your family, leave your mama, leave your daddy, leave your friends. Where I'm going, I'll show you when you start walking. But can you show me now? No, no, let's start walking. And you know what's so funny? In, in, in Genesis 12, 4, God tells Abraham, Abraham, you leave and Lot's on. Lot said, I'm going with you. God never told Lot to follow some people you can't follow because you can't, follow, you can't handle their anointing. Wow. You got to be careful who you want to follow because you may not can't handle their anointing. You just like the, the peacock, but you can't handle flying. You like the way it look, but you may not can't handle the, the storm that's going to come with it. Some people say they want to be a pastor. Oh, sit down and talk to me, baby. Sit down, I got something to say to you. I got, matter of fact, if you let me talk to you, I promise you, you'll change your mind. Even if you know God called you. Because there's some storms on this hymn. So now watch this. God tells Abraham, leave your country, leave your land, leave your family, and Lot start following. Now check this out. Soon as they start walking together, a fight break out. Lot people can't handle Abraham people. We, we, I'm your uncle, you're my nephew, and I see there's a problem with us walking together. Abraham says, the one that's called, I'm going to give you free reign. Choose where you want to go, and I go the opposite direction. Lot looked over there in New York. You don't mind if I say New York. Lot looked over there in New York and said, that's mighty pretty, there's some pretty buildings, I'm going over there. Abraham said, well, you go over there, I'm going to go to the desert. The very thing that looked dried up, God breathing on it. I know some people looking at you like you ain't going to make it, but they don't even know you already made it. I shout out our both seats. I, I know some of them are treating you like you're a nobody, but, but you ought to let them know. I'm somebody. If you don't want to hear me, let me talk to myself. I am somebody. I may not have the car you have. I may not have the house you have, but you ain't got the God I got. My God shall supply my every, I wish I had a believer. My God shall supply my, my God said he'll never leave me, nor forsake me. You, you, you don't like me, but God love me. Thank you, Jesus. So what, let me get back, let me get back. So the promises of God that he made with Abraham was leave a land. And I'm going to give you land. Leave your people. 
I'm going to give you more people. And you know what's so awesome about him? Abraham family, they dead. Abraham family dead. The family that he walked away from and left, they died 4,000 years ago. They gone. The very people he told, God told him to leave, they died. They all gone. There, there's no descendants of them. But the children God gave to Abraham, they still being birthed. As old as Abraham is, he's still giving out children. You're missing it. You're missing it. Abraham. Yes, Lord. I want you to leave your mom and daddy house, and I'm going to give you some children. Can I talk to you for a minute? What you want? I'm 75 years old already. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you some children. All right. I ain't going to stagger at the promises. I'm going to believe what you said. Even though my situation is dead, I don't look like I can have no children, but I'm going to believe what you said. I don't feel like I can have no children, but I'm going to believe. Somebody say, I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe. It's time to believe. Tell the neighbor, wake up. Wake up, neighbor. You've been asleep long enough. You're in a nightmare. Wake yourself up. He said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you children. And the children God gave Abraham, they still being born in 2018. But his natural family dead. Who family you want to be with? You want to be with the spiritual family or the natural family? If you ain't careful, you'll want to hold on to your natural so hard. And your natural, they're making you cry. The natural, they got you worried at night. The natural got you shaking your head. I don't understand. But if you get around another believer, where there's two or three, I wish I had. Where, you, where there's two or three, I want God to be in the midst. I'm tired of worrying. Tell the neighbor, I'm tired of worrying. I'm tired of trying to figure this thing out. I need some peace around here. Can I find me a witness and say, Pastor, I'm in agreement. We're going to give God praise. We're going to give God praise. I'm crying too, Pastor, but we're going to give him praise. I'm broke too, Pastor, but we're going to give him. I'm tired of ditch partners. Let me say it again. I said I'm tired of ditch partners. You in the same ditch? I want a praise partner. I want somebody to say, we coming out. We coming out. We coming out. We going to make it. We going to make it. We going to make it. We're going to make it. I'm tired of these ditch partners. Man, I'm going through me too. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know either. I need me a praise partner. Shake yourself. we coming out, baby. God with me. Tell the neighbor, God with me. Hey. I'm sorry, I got one more in me. Woo! Somebody scream! Lord, I thank you. Tell the neighbor, we coming out of this. Tell somebody, we coming out of this. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm looking for a praise partner. I'm tired of crybabies. Wait, somebody say, we coming out of this. I wish I had a praise partner. Let me get back. I got to get back. I got to get back. You church folks, I got to get back. Somebody's like, I can't help it, Pastor. I got to can't help it. I got to can't help it. If God did it four days ago, guess what he's doing right now? If God can bless Abraham four days ago, you know I'm in trouble. I'm going to jump in the way of a blessing. Here I am, Jesus. Signed, sealed, and delivered. That's a doggone shame. I said, I'm going to do all this. Wait a minute. I got to get dignified. I got to teach you some more. Come on. Come on. Let's get back. I got to teach some more. I got to teach some more. Hallelujah. Somebody got a breakthrough. Somebody got a breakthrough. Somebody said, I ain't got to wait four more days. I got mine right now, Pastor. I ain't got to wait four hours. I got it right now. Come on and get your breakthrough. 
accept your breakthrough. God made you a promise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for my promise. You promised to bring me out. You promised to heal my body. You promised to supply my every need. You better act like you got a promise. Tell her neighbor, I got high five that name. I got me a promise. I got me a promise. I got me a promise. Take that, devil. Trying to take my promise. Take that, devil. Trying to take my health. Take that, devil. I wish I had somebody to shout up in here. I wish I had somebody to scream up in here. Wow! God, I thank you today. God, I praise you today. If you can bless Abraham, I know what you're doing for me. Let's try to get back. Let's try to get back. Sit down, bless people. Sit down, promise children. So now, watch this. I need you to get this. I need you to get this. You can't celebrate the promises if you ain't going to keep the conditions. We got too many people shouting in the church and still doing wrong out the church. You can't expect God to make you a promise when you won't keep it. See, his promises are conditional and unconditional. In, in other words, he, he promised you he's going to do it, and it's going to happen. But, that's all right, God give me some butts right now. He's going to heal you. He's going to deliver you. He's going to provide for you. But, you got to bring your butt. You got to stop doing what you normally do. God ain't finna bless no mess. You better stay holy and cry knowing God gonna do it. So Genesis 22, hurry, hurry. Genesis 22, verse 16 through 18. Genesis 22, verse 16 through 18. Also Genesis 17, verse 1 and 2. Genesis 17, verse 1 and 2. So there's conditions, all right? So we just found out what was the promise God made to Abraham. Rashad, sit on the front row. I got something for you. All right, we got, we got, we got, God made a promise to Abraham, all right? We found out what that promise was. Now we need to find out what the condition is. You can't have a promise without some conditions, all right? Now watch this in Genesis 22, verse 16 and 18, and also Genesis 17, verse 1 through 2. What it says, Angie, Alicia? And, and said, uh -huh. I swear by myself. But look, 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 what you say? And said. What, what God say? I swear by myself. Now you need two witnesses. You, you can't make a, 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 a swear, you can't make a promise unless you have another witness. In other words, the purpose of another witness is so that they can say, I heard what you said. The purpose of another witness is so I can agree that I heard what you said. So what God was looking for, another him. So he turned around looking, he said, now Abraham, Abraham, Abraham and Abraham descendants, I'm going to bless you. But I need a witness to back up what I just said to you. I can't find nobody that's on my level. So I'm going to promise you by myself. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Me, myself, and I, we're going to bless you. And I ain't taking it back. Amen. I like that. I like that. God done said something. He done decreed something. And he ain't taking it back. I don't think you ought to promote them. I ain't taking it back. I don't think you ought to heal them. I ain't taking it back. I don't think you ought to give to them. I ain't taking it back. You got it, baby. Somebody say, I got it. I got it. What you got? It's in my hand. Yes. What you got? It's in my feet. What you got? I got a praise. Where's that? In my mouth. Tell the neighbor, I got it. I got it. All right, Genesis 22, verse 16 says what? I swear by myself. So God says, I'm going to bless you, but I swear to myself, from myself, by myself. Read. I swear by myself. Yeah. Declares the Lord. Declare God. That because you have done this. Because, well, uh oh. So, wait a minute now. You told me, God, when I was 75, you're going to bless my seed. You told me when I was 75 years old, you're going to bless my seed. You gave me a child when I was 100. 
but you waited till I became 112. Because now my son, 12 years old. You done blessed me with a child, and he's 12 years old. So now I'm 112, and you told me when I was 75, you're going to bless my seed. But I got to be obedient in order for the seed to be blessed. So now you done gave me the seed. Now you done gave me the seed. And you waited till that seed got 12 years old and told me, now bring me the seed back. Now, I'm confused. I know you told me that you were going to bless me. Why is it that almost 40 years later, I'm struggling with the promise? You, I know I heard you, but for some reason, this delay don't mean denied. If God said it, I wish I had some old mothers up in here. Where my old mothers at? Come on, old mothers. If God said it, somebody say it with me. If God said it, that settles it. Where my old mothers at? The old mothers say, I don't know much Bible, but I do know one thing. If God said it, tell a neighbor, that's it. That's it. You can bank on what God says. I don't care how broke you in. What did God say? You'd have been broke before, but he's going to bring you out. That's all right. You've been lonely before. He's going to bring you out. So God tells Abraham, the child 12 years old, he puts the child on the altar to kill the child. And watch what God says to this man at this here altar call. He waited till the child got 12 for him to tell Abraham, now I'm going to confirm what I said to you. I had to see your obedience. The very thing you prayed for is the very thing I'm going to ask for back. Let me help you since you kind of think you don't know what I'm talking about. The very job that you interviewed for, you prayed and I gave it to you. Now I'm asking you to give it back. You prayed for that job interview. You went in there and told them what you could do. Now you done been on it for 10 years. Now you think that you don't need to give God back what he promised you. You asked for that job, I gave it to you. You asked for that husband, I gave it to you. You asked for them children, I gave it to you. And now I want you to give it back. But oh, now you want to be stingy now. Jeepers, creepers. You better learn to give God back. You got to understand something about this promise. He waited till this boy got 12 years old. But you told me at 75, if I walk away, you'll bless me. And now, almost 40 years later, you confirm what you said at 75, but it's based on my obedience. So you mean to tell me I still got to give up something for this covenant? Watch what it says in verse 16, Rita. I swear by myself, declares the Lord, yes. that because you have done this. Because you were willing to kill your seed. And have not withheld your son. Now you got to understand something now. God didn't want him to kill the seed. God just wanted to see his obedience. Your covenant agreement is based on your obedience. Read. And have not withheld your son. Yes. Your only son. Watch what it says next. I will surely bless you. Wait a minute. You told me that in chapter 12. Why are you over here talking in chapter 22? You waited almost 40 years later to tell me what you're going to do for me. Because I needed you to see your own heart. Sometimes God will put you in a predicament so he can, so he can show you you. Oh, let me talk to real believers. Oh, it's easy to praise him when your house lining up. It's easy to praise him when you got a good bill of health. It's easy to praise him when your children lining up. It's easy to praise him when your house lining up and your job lining up and your money lining up. It's easy to give God. Hallelujah. But find out 
that somebody in your house hurting real bad. Find out that your body been wrecking with pain now. Find out that your job is on the verge of firing you and you need that job. Sometimes pain will make you praise him. You, you got to learn how to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Sometimes God will put some stuff in your way so you can get mad. That's all right. You, you got to get sick and tired. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this mess in my house. I'm tired of this mess in my finances. I'm tired. I wish I had some. Come on, champ. Come on, champ. I know you're getting hit. Come on, champ. Tell the neighbor, you're a champion. You ain't a champion. You're a champion. Sometimes God will allow trouble so you can get mad. You'll get mad. I wish I could say the other P word. P mad. Now when you get P mad, you hot. So you got to get mad with that devil bothering your house. Watch what it say, Rita. I will surely bless you. Now, now he's telling them something he already told him almost 40 years ago. But I ain't going to confirm it until you do something. I'm going to confirm what I said to you based on your obedience. Read. I will surely bless you. Yes. And make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. I'm going to not only bless you, but I'm going to bless Eric. I'm not going to only bless you, Abraham, but because you are getting ready to kill your baby, I'm going to bless Eric, baby. Read, Rita. I will surely bless you. Yes. And make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Read. And as the sand on the seashore. Uh huh. Your descendants will take possession of the cities. What you say? What you say? Your descendants. What? Will take possession of the city. We're going to take it back. I like that kind of talk. Take it back. Take your peace back. Read, read them. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. What verse it is? Verse 17. Read. And through your offspring. And, and through your and through your through your great, 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 great grandson, Eric. All nations on earth. What happened? All nations on earth. Everybody on earth who are covenant keepers, what would happen? Will be blessed. Tell that neighbor, you don't know who you're sitting by. You, you, no, I don't think you meant it. Then you need to mean it. Then tell, tell, no, 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 no. You, you don't know who you're sitting by. I, I, you about to make me speak in tongues. You don't, no, 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 no. You don't know who you're sitting by. You bet not touch me. You might get healed. You, you bet not touch me. You might get a blessing. You don't know who you're sitting by. I'm blessed coming in. Blessed going out. Tell the neighbor, I'm blessed, 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 blessed. You, ble you looking at a blessed baby. That Ellis, what about him? He's a blessed. Don't shut your mouth. <laughs> Look at Genesis 17, verse 1 through 2. Genesis 17. So the condition of the promise, Genesis 17, verse 1 through 2, what it says. When Abram was 99 years old. When Abraham was almost 100 years old, what happened? The Lord appeared to him. And said what? And said, I am God Almighty. I am God all by myself. Jesus. And what else? Walk before me faithfully. Stay faithful. And be blameless. And don't do nothing wrong. That's the condition. Stay faithful and don't mess up. Well, Pastor, we don't. No, 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 no. I don't want that. I don't want that. No, no, no. If you can be holy right now, you can be holy tomorrow. No, no. Don't, no, no, no. Come to me with that mess. Well, we only human. No, no, no. You trying to find a reason to mess up. If God can fill me with his Holy Spirit, and if I can yield to this Holy Spirit, I ain't messing up. I got on mess, but I ain't letting this mess mess me up. That's all right. You missed it. I got on mess, but I ain't going to let this mess mess me up. Great is he that's on the inside. So, so now, now watch this. That's 
Let's go over. Let's go over to number three. We looked at number two, the conditions of the promise. Now let's look at number three. Number three is who's the heirs to this promise? I, I need to know who who the, who the heirs are. I, don't, I need to know is it just the, the Jews only. I need to know can, can somebody else get involved with this in blessing? Okay, let's, let's find out. Uh, Galatians three, Galatians three, verse eight through nine, and verse twenty-eight through twenty-nine. Galatians three, verse eight and nine, and verse twenty-eight and twenty-nine. So now you ain't got to be talking about God's people, the Jews, God's people. Well, how come Isaac didn't get the blessing like Abraham? Well, I take it back. Not Isaac. Uh, 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 it, it was Abraham's son. I can't think of that boy's name. Ishmael. How come Ishmael didn't get the blessing? He wasn't the promise. Go ahead on, girl. Don't start nothing up for him. Help me preach that thing. I like that. Ishmael was part of the clan, but God told Abraham, let Ishmael and his mama go on somewhere. I told you I'm going to give you a child. You the one went out there and made a child. I ain't tell you to go make something that I promised I'm going to give you. You ain't got to work hard on what I'm going to give you. Wow. So now who's the heirs? Gen Galatians 3, verse 8 through 9, and verse 28, 29 says what, Alicia? Scripture first saw uh -huh. that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. God justified us. He brought us in, grafted us in by faith. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me God had faith too? Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me God got faith? The very thing he created, he had to use himself. Wow. <laughs> he brought you here by faith. It was up to you to decide you want to serve him. So God brought what he told us, if I can do it, you can do it. If God can use faith, you can use faith. Read, read it. Scripture for Saul. Yes. That God would justify the Gentiles by faith. Yes. And announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. He announced the gospel before Abraham got him. You do know what 1 Corinthians 15 says. Paul said, by this gospel, mm -hmm. we are saved by this gospel. Yes. What's the gospel, Paul? The death, burial, and resurrection. And you mean to tell me God spoke that four, four days ago? Yes. Jesus just died two days ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. <laughs> Zebedee, I'm coming to snow here because these people don't want me no more. God, he spoke it four days before Abraham got here what the gospel was. Then he let it come to pass two days afterwards. Read that again. <laughs> Scripture I don't know what's wrong with these people. Read. Scripture for Saul. Uh -huh. That God would justify the Gentiles by faith. He brought us in by faith. Read. And announced the gospel in advance to and Abraham. And announced. Announced. Doo -doo -doo -doo, what? The, the gospel. gospel coming. What I was saying. The gospel train coming. Read it, read it. And announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. Yes. All nations will be blessed through you. Everybody. Everybody. Lottie, Dottie, everybody. Going to be blessed through Abraham. Read, read it. So those who rely on faith uh -huh. are blessed along with Abraham, say the man again. of Wait, faith. Say, say, no, no, say that again. So those who rely on faith. Those who depend on faith. Are blessed along with Abraham. My daddy four days ago. Read. The man of faith. Uh-huh. Verse 28. What it says. There is neither Jew. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Quit trying to talk about them. them the, well, God's, God's chosen people. You about to miss your blessing. You trying to limit God. God, read verse 28 says. There is neither Jew, uh -huh. nor Gentile, yes. neither slave, uh -huh. nor free, yeah. nor there is male uh -huh. or female, yeah. for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We all one in Christ Jesus. Whew. Let me go home. Hebrews 10.35. Hebrews 10.35. What verse in Hebrews 10, 35 says, Alicia? So do not throw away your confidence. Don't give up on your hope. 
I know you got a trying situation. Don't give up on your hope. Read. So do not throw away your confidence. Yes. And it will be richly rewarded. You're going to be rewarded if you keep your faith. You're going to be rewarded. Okay. I got to stop. Okay. Watch this. 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3. The world, that's why they steal. That's why they kill. That's why they destroy. Because they don't believe in the promise. The world is going to do stupid stuff because they don't believe in the promise. You are believing the promise because God said it. You are going to be blessed. If I did it for Abraham, you next. And God said, I can't back up on my word. I can't change my mind. You're going to be blessed like that. But the world, they're raising your taxes. They're trying to fire you off your job. They're trying to steal and kill your children. They're robbing and breaking in your house and cars. They're trying to rape you. They're trying to get more money out of you because they don't believe the promise. You just read where God told Abraham at 75 what I'm going to do. But the reiteration didn't come until almost 36, 40 years later. When you showed me what you would sacrifice, I show you what I'm going to do again for you. And the world don't want to sacrifice. So I don't care how many times you talk about Jesus coming. The world says, I don't believe that mess. Read it. Come on and read it. 2 Peter 3 and 3 says what? Above all, yes. you must understand what? that in the last days. In the last days. You living in them? You living in it right now. Read. Scoffers will come. Scoffers will Scoffers, picking, picking at people, laughing at people, messing with people. What's going to happen? Scoffing and following their own evil desires. They're going to follow what they feel. God don't want believers to walk by feelings. Yeah. He wants us to walk by faith. But the world walk by feelings. That's why they don't come to church. That's why they don't believe in God. Because they go by what they feel. Read. They will say. What they say. Where is this coming he promised? Oh, see that? Where is the promise about Jesus coming back the second time? He ain't came yet. And they don't even believe that Jesus said, I'm coming back. All because you were able to wake up in the morning and still do wrong. You think God done forgot his promise. God said, I'm not like you. I don't make a promise and then forget it. I'm not human. He said, don't you know that the reason why the earth is still in its socket, you want to know why the sun's still in its socket? Because of my promise. And just because you woke up and stole money, just because you woke up and had sex before marriage, just because you woke up and lied on somebody and I ain't do nothing, you, you think I don't forgot what I said? I ain't forgot, I told Abraham four days ago that if you be obedient and faithful, I'll bless you. But some of your descendants, they chasing feeling. And that's why they don't believe the promise. But we got a better promise. I got to stop. I don't want to stop, but I got to stop. I believe God is telling me to do something, and so I'm going to do it. I want Quentin and Rashad to come to the altar. Amen, pastors. Stand behind both one of them. Four-door, four-door, four-door. Stand behind both of them. Father, we ordain these men as deacon of New Restoration Outreach Christian Centers. We ordain these men to be servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, use them for your glory. Let them serve the body of Christ right now in the name of Jesus. We pull down every stronghold. Let forgiveness be in their heart. Let love be in their heart. Let the spirit of serving be in their heart. We ordain you this day as deacons of New Restoration Outreach Christian Center. Let the Lord Jesus use you like never before. God, thank you right now for these men. These men, we lift them up before you in the name of Jesus. Somebody celebrate right now. 
for our new ordained deacons. Hey, I shut up. Where are my deacons at? Come on, deacons. Come on, deacons. Come on, deacons. Reach your fellow brothers. Come on, deacons. Hey, I shut out our books. You don't know what God will do around here. You don't know what God will do around here. Hallelujah. 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 God ain't going to leave himself without a witness. Your first order as deacons. The brothers are coming. Let's celebrate 